Okay, welcome back to Postmortem. I've, uh, this is the start of a new session, and it's been a minute since I last played, so I will need to <laughs> get myself caught up on everything. Um, I remember we are playing uh, a new guy. Ah, here we go. Who's investigating. We are playing this guy. We have to go... We're investigating this. That's what we're doing. I remember. I'm so sorry, but like, you know... I take a break from my game and then I forget most of what's been going on. Kids, they roll around in the mud all day. And who scrubs? Old Muggins here. Hello, Old Muggins. Who are you? Can't you see I'm not here? If it's for the poor, I gave at the office. Lovely day, isn't it? Say, can you give me the Eaton's room number? The Eaton's? What do you want from the Eaton's? Are you a friend of theirs? You don't look the sort they would associate with. I'm Jacques Eloin, private detective. I hate to be any bother, but I have a few questions to ask the Eaton. Let's be nice. A detective? I knew they were shady, those two. With all that riffraff that Paul knocked about with. That Montparnasse bunch. In any case, they have split. Hmm. Montparno. You mean people who live in the Montparnasse district, the, the artist quarter? Paul hung out with artists there. Anywhere in particular? The Alambic Gang? That's where all the layabouts met. Birds of a feather stick together, as they say. Oh, Alambic. These bloody rascals really want to drive me up the wall. I have a floor to scrub. So you with the mustache, clear off or I'll chuck you out on your ear. Alright then, I guess, uh... Well, I'll be. Here you are again. Those grubby kids are already driving me crazy. I don't need a mug hanging around watching me work. Clear off. I'll make you eat my sponge as a snack, mark my words. And where do you think you're going, eh? You gonna walk over me to get in here? Some people have work to do. Alright, fine, I guess we're not doing that. I'm pretty sure that would be the way back out, so let's... I guess check around elsewhere. Wherever elsewhere is. Plants, plants, plants. I can do something with that. Sort of, anyway. And that door doesn't exist, so we can't do anything with that. Uh, well, I have a ball. This is just like a tiny little courtyard in this place, isn't it? Hmm. Let's see, what do we have? Uh... Oh right, this was the case, wasn't it? Little rascals, wait till I catch you! It's those, it's those damn kids! They did, did it. Hey! Not my flowers, my beautiful flowers! Wait! They're going to see what I'm made of. It was... them kids. Them kids, though. OK, 
can't go in there. I'm just checking around. Okay, I guess this is the door we're going in. Strange. Door is open. Yeah. Oh dear, what a mess. Mrs. Evelyn, you've got some cleaning to do. Hmm. All right. Let's check out this room first. So one thing that there is kind of about this is that the animation at, or it tends to be similar to how like animation used to be in older um, cartoons, where you could tell that things that were going to move were different colors. Oh, Bistro Olympica like exposition September. Bend of the Olympic. Oh, here we go. What I pick up there? Uh, written by Gracie. Eaton. Letter written by English in English by a woman. It appears to be information on an organization called Brotherhood of Supreme Order of the Rosy Cross. Names of Dr. Elipin, uh, Punuin, and Dr. Kofner are mentioned. Kofner is the doctor that was in the other case too. The Brotherhood, an apparently harmless esoteric fraternity influenced by the Templars, dozen members, some very influential. Gregory de la Pin is the leader, the Supreme Brother. He goes by the initial GDA. Dr. Frank Kaufner is right hand man, goes by the initial K. Pumolin is the doorman at the meeting place. The notes were taken by Faye. She notes the success of her plan which consists of pretending to be the reincarnation of a woman called Adeline, who supposedly lived in the Middle Ages thanks, uh, thanks to her talents as a medium. According to Faye, Dr. Elipine and Kaufner both seem to have fallen into her trap. Dr. Elipine supposedly promised Faye could see the head of Baphomet once he had transmigrated. What does that mean? What? does that mean? I have no idea. What was this other thing? Dr. Kaufner, psychiatrist. Yeah, okay. So, Dr. Kaufner is that same Dr. Kaufner. Next, we'll ignore the train. We'll just have it as, like, the train is normal background for this place, probably. Okay. Ah. Ticket. Boat ticket. To a boat. Oh, this way. That's a wallet. Oh, I see. We can just... Oh, okay. Well, uh... We don't... Okay, I thought we could see something over there, but I guess not. Alright. I think that might be... Hopefully that's everything here. If not, I'll, ha I'll end up having to come back, but that's not too big of a deal. Uh, save. Luckily, saving takes like no time at all in this game, so I'm not gonna need to like put time into it. Okay, so we have new places to go. We have the police station, Alambique, Meeting Hall, Alapine, Frank Kofner's, and our own office. Let's head to Alambique. And the time he dressed up as an angel, and he... Berenice. did not have a string on his bow. Berenice. Oh, sorry. Jacques Elouin. Elouin. Perhaps you could help me. Why not? Would you like a drink? Come on, don't be silly. I'm a modern girl. Come, have a seat. Mm. 
You've never been here. I would remember your face. I'm curious to know what brings you here. <laughs> Cute dolls. Let's, uh, let's Today do this. Today must be my lucky day. In my job, I usually deal with punks, not cute dolls like you. I'm a detective. You happen to know a certain Paul Eaton? The American? Paul Eaton? Yes, I know him. He's been filling our heads with his stories for the past month. He and the owner are mates. So you know, no, it's not. Let's try this. Interesting story about Eaton. Is he on to something big? Did he give you any details? Mind you, with guys like him, you never know what to believe. I'm fond of you, Snoop. You know how to go about things. I'm going to help you. Paul Eaton was in Paris for a contract. A scam that would make him rich. His wife was his accomplice. Then he got the jitters. He is hiding now. Hulot, the owner, definitely knows more. You'll have to see him about that. Only thing is, he's not too fond of private snoops. <laughs> <laughs> Charming, living these. I can feel that, like me, you're dying to know where Paul Eaton and his wife are. What was Paul planning to do after his job? Any ideas? The owner Ulu knows a thing or two. Paul only spoke English, and he never mentioned any names. He could not have known much. It's not because you drink like a fish that you know more. It was his other half who pulled the strings. Oh. Uh, Berenice, do you believe this bank heist story? Eaton must surely have been planning something. He could not have just given up like a complete idiot. Must be a diversion. It smacks of a wild goose chase. Charming and smart, that P.I. Only he has it wrong. It was not the banker's money the Eatons were after. It was a treasure he had hidden in his place. The woman took care of seducing him. Paul was there to pick the fruit when it was ripe. He was completely manipulated, that poor Paul. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's not be an ass. Uh, okay. The owner, Ulo, is also your friend. Hmm. Would you be kind enough to introduce us? The owner's not here. He's just driven off. Actually, I think he had a rendezvous with Eaton. This is all kind of out of order and honest, stuff. I don't know if I have I to, to like ask the all the weekend. things, because I'd rather I stay on a friendly That's note with Berenice. No, She's I obviously know, willing to give information you. if you're nice. We do not really know what Eaton is doing in Paris. In the beginning, he said he was with his sister, a student. After a few binges, his sister had become his wife, and they were both onto the scam of the century. Huh. Damn it, this is too much. I'm always one step behind. This time, I'll catch them before they slip away again. It is simple, Jacques. The owner went dashing off. He mentioned a restaurant, getting back late. How would I know? A restaurant. How fitting. 
I was planning on inviting you. But a restaurant in Paris... It's like looking for an eel in the haystack. Any idea which one? And why would I know? Eaton talked about going out to a chic restaurant with his wife. But he did not even know which one. It was Hulot who scribbled down the address before leaving. Hmm. Berenice. Pretty name. Your knight in shining armor left you alone in such a place. That's hardly wise. I'm old enough to look after myself, but thanks for the thought. What about Paul? I think I have to ask often? every question. You know, if he starts bugging you, it would give me more reasons to nail him. You know, Jacques, that Eaton smells like trouble. One day, he turns up from God knows where with his little British accent. After a few drink sessions with Hulot, the owner, he loses his accent. After that, he shows up here practically every day, more American than ever. Then wham! No more news. That's all you know, is it? I guess that's the only In thing case, left. <laughs> someone as charming as you is always beyond suspicion. Ciao, Snoop. Oh, that was nice. I actually misread that. I thought he was being an ass. Uh-huh, okay. No, Ulo is not in. Look, a notepad. The first page seems to have been ripped out in a hurry. Mm. I know this method. I've seen it done before. Oh, there we go. Alexandre. Oh, I guess we're done. Sweet, so we have our next location. I'm gonna do a quick once over before we head out just to make sure I haven't missed anything else here. Alright, I didn't find anything else, so here we go. Hulo is implicated in this affair? But how? Who knows? He's a fence, is he not? Oh, I brought back to... you a little snack. Thank you. I'll just put it there. We'll help ourselves. Okay, where was I? Oh, uh, yes, the restaurant. Oh, right. Yeah, that was okay. Just kind of a, uh, whatever. Sup? Good evening, sir. Welcome to Chez Alexandre. Do you have a reservation? Let's see what else we have. Power detective, looking for two crooks. Alapine. Yeah. And then asshole. Oh, uh, let's do I'm this. I'm here to see some friends. Two Americans, a couple. The Eatons. I hope I haven't missed them. I do not see any reservation under that name. Maybe they have reserved a table in another establishment. Well, they're not using their real names. Oh, come on, try a little. Another guy may have joined them. A certain Ulo. You should have said so. Of course, I remember that. <laughs> That's an Ulo name. Quite the yeah. scene during the meal. Are He's the name no dropper. <laughs> in the end, a man turned up and they all left in a car. But you're mistaken about the name. It was white, not eaten. Of that, I'm sure. Oh, really? Well, if that's all you have, the whites will have to do. Do you know where I can find them? I hope they're not too far away. This is becoming quite urgent. Are you sure these are the Americans you're looking for? You know Paris is crawling with Americans. If it's of any help to you, I remember this particular couple. 
put their bill onto an account at the Hotel Orfe in the 8th District. An establishment undoubtedly all too respectable for them. I seem to remember that the lady has already been here with Mr. De Alpin. Sometimes appearances can be misleading, you know? Like the gentleman who joined them. Well dressed, a beautiful car, very, very high class. But he could have been a hoodlum too, for all I know. Ah, it's hard to know who you can trust, huh? Huh? All right then. So that gives us the Hotel of Fe. Right? Yeah, I would assume that's what it gave us. That makes sense. The hotel was, um... That's where the whites were killed, actually. So I wonder if Eaton was just a surname or a fake name they were using for a while. And White is their actual name. Oh gosh. This might have been the actual pl people who got killed. That's seeming like it's more and more the possibility here. Alright. Excuse me. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orfe. How may I help you? White. I've come to see the Whites. Which room might I find them in? We do not give out such information, sir. Not without the prior agreement of our clients. Hmm. Come on. It's not as if I'm asking for the moon. I just want to know if the Whites are guests at your hotel. I'm sorry, sir. I will not answer any questions regarding the Orfe's guests. Ha! <laughs> I had you going there for a minute. The Whites really are guests at your hotel. Why? I never! I... I... I strongly advise you to leave this establishment before I call the authorities. Hey, and, um, while we're at it, any chance I can get their room number as well? <laughs> that is enough. I refuse to talk to you any further. <laughs> you're not the first guard dog I have encountered, but you're certainly the toughest. I'll let you think about it. Do not worry, though. I'll be back soon. It is better that way, sir. Oh, right. Okay, what do I do now? Because these guys... Now what? If you want any leads about the Whites, wait for me at the Nazi. I will give you some. Right, because... This case cause... is really beginning to get on my nerves. Right, because these guys saw him here and were tell and told us about it. Okay. This makes sense, actually. What's up? What can I get you, sir? A bottle, please. That will be five francs, sir. All right. Thanks and good day. You're welcome, sir. I don't know why I bought that. Hmm. Excuse me, sir. May I help you? Oh, do you forget that that uh okay. He apparently forgot for a few seconds there. All right. So kind of hit a brick wall here. I'll have to go somewhere else first. Oh, we... We can go here. Maybe we can do that.